I never imagined that a routine food delivery could turn into the most terrifying night of my life. My name is Jake, and I've been working as a food delivery driver for six months. It's usually straightforward. Pick up the food, drop it off, and move on to the next order. But tonight was different. Tonight, everything changed. It was just after 11 p.m. when the order came in. The app pinged, showing a location I'd never delivered to before, a small house on the outskirts of town. The address was down a long, winding road surrounded by thick woods. It felt odd, but I didn't think much of it. People live in remote areas, right? When I arrived at the restaurant to pick up the food, the order was already waiting. The cashier handed me the bag with a strange look on her face. You're delivering to the old Miller place? She asked, her voice tinged with concern. Yeah, why? I replied, trying to sound casual. She hesitated for a moment before shaking her head. No reason. Just be careful out there. I shrugged it off, though her unease started to gnaw at me. The bag was heavier than usual, and an odd sweet smell wafted from it. I didn't think much of it. Maybe it was just some dish I wasn't familiar with. I loaded it into my car and set off. As I drove down the dark, narrow road, the trees seemed to close in around me. The farther I went, the weaker my phone signal became. I kept glancing at the GPS, hoping I was on the right track, but the directions kept getting more confusing. The app's voice told me to turn left where there was no road, just more trees. I was beginning to feel uneasy. Finally, I saw a small, dimly lit house at the end of a narrow path. It looked old, almost abandoned. The windows were dark, and there were no cars outside. I felt a chill run down my spine, but I shook it off. I was just here to deliver food, nothing more. I parked the car and grabbed the bag. The smell was even stronger now, almost sickeningly sweet. As I walked up to the door, I noticed how quiet it was. Too quiet. No wind, no animals, just silence. I knocked on the door, but there was no answer. I knocked again, louder this time. Still nothing. Just as I was about to leave the food on the doorstep and walk away, the door creaked open, just a crack. I couldn't see inside, only darkness. I was about to call out when a voice low and raspy whispered, come in. I froze, every instinct screaming at me to turn around and leave. But something compelled me to step inside. The door creaked shut behind me and I was swallowed by darkness. I fumbled for my phone trying to use the flashlight, but the battery was dead. My heart pounded in my chest. Hello? I called out, my voice trembling. There was no response, just the sound of slow, heavy breathing from somewhere deep within the house. Suddenly a light flickered on. I was standing in a small cluttered kitchen. The walls were lined with old yellowing wallpaper and the floor creaked under my feet. In the middle of the room was a table set with a single plate, fork, and knife. The smell was overwhelming now, almost suffocating. Is, is anyone here? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. From the shadows, a figure emerged, a man tall and gaunt, with hollow eyes and pale skin. He looked like he hadn't seen the sun in years. He stepped closer, and I realized with a jolt that I recognized him. It was the man from the photograph hanging on the wall, the same photograph I'd noticed as soon as I entered the house. You're just in time for dinner, he said, his voice dripping with malice. He smiled, revealing sharp, yellowed teeth. I backed away, bumping into the table. The man stepped closer, his smile widening. In his hand was a long, sharp knife, stained with something dark. I was trapped, my heart racing, my breath coming in short, panicked gasps. What? What do you want? I stammered, my voice shaking. He chuckled, a low, sinister sound that sent chills down my spine. You're the final ingredient, he whispered. Before I could react, he lunged at me, the knife flashing in the dim light. I dodged to the side, grabbing the first thing I could find, a heavy cast iron skillet from the stove. I swung it with all my might connecting with his head. He staggered back, dazed, giving me just enough time to make a run for it. I bolted toward the kitchen window, smashing through the glass and landing hard on the ground outside. I didn't stop to look back. I ran through the woods, branches scratching at my face and arms until I finally reached the road. I collapsed on the pavement, gasping for breath. My car was still there, parked just where I had left it. 
I scrambled inside, locking the doors and speeding away as fast as I could. I didn't stop until I was back in town, where the lights and sounds of the city felt like a lifeline. When I finally got home, I deleted the delivery app from my phone. I never wanted to think about that night again, but the memory still haunts me. I don't know what was in that house or what would have happened if I hadn't escaped. All I know is that I'll never take a late night delivery again.